All right, everybody, let's go ahead and talk about the isentropic efficiencies. We discussed efficiencies of steady flow devices before in module 2. Now I'm talking about isentropic efficiencies and also motivate why I'm, uh, you know, introducing this to you, okay? Um, the first thing is uh, the, the steady sta state uh, flow devices. Uh, we have like turbine, uh, the nozzle, the compressor, the heat exchanger, right, from module 5. So I'm talking about those, just to clarify. The second thing I want to clarify is, why are we doing this? Well, let me tell you why that is. So, uh, if I look at this uh, in increase of the entropy principle, I, I have this uh, relationship, right? Um, and actually, in the previous segment, we talked about this. The maximum power, let's take a uh, turbine, right? The maximum work output from the turbine will be obtained for isentropic process, okay? And actually, in the last segment, I solved the question for the reverse of it, which was a compressor. And in the compressor, what I did was, um, if it is isentropic, I will get the minimum amount of work that I have to put in, okay? So that's why I'm dealing with this. So this is going to give me a, like a benchmark and in really realistic terms, okay? The problem is the thermal efficiencies is the fact that if you look at the desired output divided by the input, right, you never get 100%. This you can accomplish, okay? That's why the efficiency figure for isentropic is higher than the thermal, okay? Um, and when we look at these devices, typically there are two paths to have isentropic, right? Um, in, again, from the previous segment. And the first was, I'm going to give some numbers for us to get going. Um, let's say that this was, uh, I have a, a heat transfer, um, let's say kilogram per Kelvin, right? And this can be 10 too, right? Um, because then it will, uh, you know, balance each other. These two will cancel. I have an isentropic process, um, isentropic. Or the second option is I can have zero, zero. Okay. And when you look at the isentropic efficiencies of steady flow devices, it turns out, and which doesn't come as a surprise, that as long as they are adiabatic, um, adiabatic plus reversible, that's what the second zero means, I will be able to obtain the highest possible efficiency, okay? And I will follow the order that I did in module 5, and I will first talk about the nozzle, okay? And I'm going to give you a reminder because I'm pretty sure nobody kind of remembers. For a subsonic flow, okay, the, uh, the nozzle is something like this. There's no work input, okay? Um, you can think about the nozzle out of the garden hose, right? Um, typically, in the thermodynamics, we don't deal with it. We deal for jet engines uh, for energy extraction uh, purposes. But we have one inlet, we have one outlet, right? I had an M dot that comes in, the same M dot goes out. And again, for subsonic flow, this is the shape. Um, and I did the, this M dot is rho V A. Do you remember that uh, business? Uh, rho 2, V2, A2, and this was 1, 1, 1. And as A2 is much smaller than A1, my V2 becomes much larger than. Uh, V1, and I also said that P2 was larger than P1, right? That's how it happens, okay? Um, so I want to uh, write the first law over here, um, Q.net minus W.net. You're, you're an expert on this, hopefully, um, by now. So HE plus V exit squared by 2 plus GZ exit minus HI plus V inlet squared by 2 plus GZ inlet, right? Um, and if I look at, uh, you know, I'm looking at the, you know, adiabatic, that's what it says, right, that adiabatic, so that goes away. There's no, you know, like thinking about the end of the garden hose, you're not plugging into electricity, right, or you're not generating any electricity or some kind of a power, so that's out. Potential energy changes are negligible. So from here, you can see the first law tells me that um, these relationship should hold true for a nozzle, okay? Another thing that we typically do, not, not required, it's not a deal breaker if we don't, but this is typically the case. That we, you know, for, especially for jet engine applications, for instance, this aspect ratio is huge, so that what I will have is this, the inlet velocity will be negligible. It is there, obviously, if the inlet velocity is zero, I mean, the device is not working, right? But still, it is small compared to the V exit, it's not gonna um, change. And I also mentioned to you, remember that, um, like this number is extremely higher than this number, so it doesn't really matter at the end of the day when you compare these two, okay? And then from here, the V exit 
uh, squared divided by 2 becomes h i minus h exit. Okay. Okay, now I'm in a position to define the efficiency, isentropic efficiency of a no nozzle. Okay. The way that it is defined is actual kinetic energy at exit divided by isentropic kinetic energy at the exit. Now here's the deal though. If I say I'm looking at uh, this guy, right? This guy isentropic uh, kinetic energy at the exit. I need for me to define the state, I need two from the state postal, right? Two independent uh, properties. The first property comes from the isentropic fact. So I can say that S1 is equal to S2, right? But that's not sufficient enough my, for me to find everything that I need for this case, right? I need one more. So, and the one more is we define this way. P2 actual will be equal to P2S, okay? So I'm kind of fixing the pressure. I know that the pressure of the second for nozzle was smaller than P1, but I'm saying that between those two conditions, I'm fixing the pressure. This is kind of important, okay? Um, and that's when we obtain the highest efficiency, okay? You can imagine this will be the, the exit actual square. I'm dividing by two, I mean, I think you kind of see, divided by the actual uh, entropy as entropic square and from here you can see that I can also write in terms of the H actually the H version is more uh, you know convenient for me so I have H I minus H E divided by H I minus H E S okay and you can call this A as well if you want and one thing important is the way that we define this is just like the efficiencies that we have but it is between zero it can be zero if you don't know really what you're doing right and it can be one in theory, okay? It can approach one, all right? I think it's now a good time to solve a question because it's a little bit, uh, you know, uh, I didn't do a, did a great job. So let me do it with an example so it will uh, help you, okay? Um, let me write the question statement, obviously. I'll be right back, okay? Okay, so this is the question I'm dealing with. I am given an adiabatic nozzle. Good. There we go. Um, I have my control volume, something like that, right? Okay, so let me go ahead and read the question. It's an adiabatic, so that's good. Isentropic efficiency is given of 88%, okay? If air enters, so remember, read the question air, it's important. If this was a steam, that's different, right? Um, 60, so P1 is 60 PSI A, T1 is equal to 700 Fahrenheit, so I'm assuming this is for jet engine, okay, because it's fairly high uh, pressure and temperature. Um, because at the end of the jet engines, we have nozzles. Um, exists with a velocity of 500 feet per second. So the exit, so the, let's call this P2, is equal to 500 feet per second. And it didn't give me the P2 and it didn't give me the T2. So those are being asked to me, okay, exit uh, pressure. One thing I want to highlight is, do you remember? Um, well, you should remember, I just talked about it two minutes ago. P2S will be equal to P2A, okay? The actual and the isentropic will have the same pressure. And you'll see this will be needed for me to solve this question, okay? But let's pretend that this is module uh, five, right? Let me do what I gotta do. So this is uh, 1160, right? Plus 460, right? Ranking. Um, okay, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna kinda ignore, uh, this doesn't even exist. So, you know, like, like just like module five, let me get to the business with the first law. Okay, um, that is equal to, I mean, you can simply write the formula copy paste from above. And actually, I should have done this. Uh, it's taking me kind of a little while to write this. Uh, Vnaf squared plus gzi. Um, you know, so we talked about this. These two are zero. These two are uh, potential energies are gone. So from here, your he plus V e squared by 2 is equal to h i plus v in net squared by 2, okay? And we said v in net squared by 2, I didn't even give it to you, right? What can I do? I mean, can I assume like, I mean, 10, whatever? No, we just assume 0, right? I mean, I mean, it's not 0. Obviously, there's an inlet, but I assume or rather, uh, you know, it's negligible. That was a better terminology. So I simply go to table 11A17E. Okay, there's different methods as well. I talked about this in detail in module five, right? But I, I, I this is my preferred method. You can go to table A to B, etc., etc. But that's the way I do it. Okay, so uh, this is listed only as a function of uh, temperature because remember H T for ideal gases, right? 
Um, so 1160 uh, ranking, and I'm lucky in a sense that they even listed this. So this is 21 BTU per pound mass. Okay. So then I can find my HE from this up relation there, like HE plus V exit, which is V exit is 500. Boy, that's pretty big. Square divided by um, 2, right? Is equal to um, H inlet 281.14, right? When I do it, wow, so HE becomes negative. What am I doing wrong here? Well, what am I doing wrong here is you didn't uh, convert the units. So the units of this guy, this is going to be obviously feet squared per second squared, right? This one, unit wise. And this is B2 per pound mass. So I have to have some kind of a conversion, right? You forget that. That's why sometimes I see this in the exam. So I wanted to make it here to collect. Um, so 25,000, I should have written 37 of feet per second squared is equal to one BTU per pound mass. So that means that I need to divide this guy by 25,037. In the exam, sometimes I also see students multiplying this by, though that's a lot of fun. But anyways, when uh, you know, all said and done, you got your HE to be 276.15 BTU per pound mass. And note that I can also say HE actual, okay? So, okay, this is nice because I can do exactly the step in a reversed manner. So I know my age exit, so I can read my temperature. So that will be one of the unknowns that I have. Oh, that's pretty convenient. So let's uh, do it. So I go to table A, 17. I look at the T in terms of the ranking, and I look at the H in terms of BTU per pound mass. And I see actually that the H didn't change too much, right? So the temp, uh, the temperature is not gonna you know vary a lot so i'm simply copy pasting from what i see on over there uh, one four and the number that is i have over here is 276.15 and you can see it's right in the middle right i mean i don't even have to actually have to do a, a interpolation for this it is going to be 1140 i mean if you choose to do it but you'll see it's going to be you know 1140 point something um, so this will be my uh, you know T2. So if I they ask me my T2 actual, that is going to be 1140 ranking. If I must have 460, so that's going to be 80680 Fahrenheit. So that is my answer. Now I'm, you know, I'm, I, I, I mean, this is as you noticed, I didn't have to cover anything from this uh, module uh, seven at all to solve this question, right? So far. So now I'm a bit uncomfortable because uh, the the pressure doesn't change the H. So how am I going to find the pressure then? Because the pressure, as I show over here, the H is only a function of temperature for either gas, not pressure. So how am I going to find the pressure? You're looking at it. So what I have to do is I have to find the pressure of an isentropic process. So I'm going to assume it's adiabatic plus reversible. In actuality, this is adiabatic, but it is not reversible. Right? That's why I have an 88% efficiency. If I have reversible, this would have been 100%. Okay? Um, so I will do that approach. I will uh, go through the process of uh, you know, writing this down because we did this H, HI minus HE actual divided by HI minus HE uh, of S. Um, so this is given as 0 0.88, right? So HI was uh, 281.14. Um, HI is in both. Uh, be careful over here. HE actual is what I find at 276.15, the, the green font up there. And this is the, 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 I don't know that. Okay. So if I, you know, go through this in the, plug this into my calculator, I get this 275.47 BTU per pound mass. So you can actually see that this is fairly close to this value, right? So that, why, that makes sense, right? It is a fairly efficient uh, nozzle. It's 88%, almost 90%. And that's actually uh, realistic. This is not a made up uh, number, okay? Um, so then I will do exactly what I did over here. So I will go through this process, okay? And actually, why don't I not write it in here? Because let's write it in another uh, font. Let's call it pink. And this number now, I'm right here at 275.47, right? I don't want to write this. And this time now, if I calculate it, now I have to interpolate. I'll find 1137 uh, Rankin. So only 3 Fahrenheit or 3 Rankin, same thing, right? 
uh, difference between those two. Okay. So now the thing is, um, I have I'm in a good position because I know P two S. I don't know P two S. I don't know this. I know this. I know T one, and I know P one. Um, I I think you may notice where I am going. I'm gonna take advantage of isentropic uh, relationships for ideal gases that we have derived in the previous module. And I had this P2 by P1. Remember, you can only do this for an isentropic process. Okay, not all ideal gases will have this formula. Okay, so I want to warn you. That's why I didn't do it for this case, right? I could have simply do this. Well, I could have done it. It would be wrong, but I didn't do this for this case, right? I didn't do this for you know T P T2 actual. It's only isentropic process. Okay, okay. I think I made my point fairly clearly, at least that's my hope. T2S was 1137, it's up there. Um, T1 was 1160, I know that. P2, or P2S, which is the same, by the way, this is equal to P2A as well, right? So that's gonna be P2, which I don't know, and P1 will be uh, 60, is it? Yeah, 60 PSIA is what it what was given. So K was. Uh, I, I need to read this, uh, you know, I memorized it so many times I've been doing this, but you need to go to table A to E, and for A you're going to read this uh, table A to E, K is 1.4, that means 0 0.4 divided by 1.4, and I, again, I need to punch this in this calculator for sure, and I get this to be 56 PSIA, okay? So you can see my P2, A, is equal to P2S is equal to 56 PSIA. I lost 4 PSIA in this particular uh, nozzle. All right, that's going to do it for me for this segment. Thank you for watching uh, and following along. Have a wonderful day. Bye.